Hello, we're doing Dead by Daylight Lore today. If you didn't guess from the spectacular introduction clip by Jin Seo Bak, please go check out his magnificent channel in the description down below. He does some amazing VFX and sequences which utterly blow my mind. Wait, but what the hell? Your channel name is Anime Nier. You're supposed to be doing anime. What don't you understand? Well, this channel is kind of dedicated to stuff I enjoy and feel passionate about. And recently, I've gotten really into this video game. So, we're doing Death by Daylight today. Rest assured, next episode of Anime Nyan, that's anime. Now, before I start, I want to say I love this game. I love watching it. And if I had a proper PC, I would be playing the hell out of it. But I don't. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you. Sad. But anyway, back to the game. Let's dive right in. For those who haven't gotten up to date, let me say, the story is rather hard to sort out. It's so densely packed with lore and instead given to us through snippets of a journal written by a Benedict Baker and item descriptions. Kind of like Dark Souls. The story goes that there is a town called Weeks, a place with an unusual number of missing persons cases. So our old friend, Benedict Baker, being the moral and upright man that he is, decides to investigate. Like an idiot, I should say. Just as a side note, don't go investigating places touched by the darkest of evils. Believe me, it's a bad idea. So long story short, he tracks the root of all the evil down to a single place, a since defunct mine called the Macmillan Estate. His next journal entry comes an uncertain amount of time later, Benedict Baker claiming he has no memory of how he came here, and his last recollection was of beginning the journey towards the Macmillan Estate. Where he finds himself is trapped in what seems to be a hellish alternate dimension, in places which mirror locations where serial killers committed their heinous crimes, such as the Red Forest, Crotus Pren Asylum, and even the Macmillan Estate itself. He is stalked by various killers alongside other survivors who are sacrificed to a being called the Entity, the one who created this alternate dimension. Okay, and since Wikipedia has already done such a great job explaining what the entity is, we're going to take a few snippets directly from Wikipedia because it would be a waste not to. So reading straight from Wikipedia, the entity is a supernatural being hailing from the ancient blood web, is awakened from its slumber whenever it is summoned by actions of great violence and malice. So the killers, exclusively serial murderers, are pulled out of reality by it and convinced to do its bidding. In order to maintain its existence, the entity requires sacrifices and demands that they hunt and kill the survivors so it can feed off their hope and steal a piece of their soul upon death. The survivors are pulled into the entity's constructed world when they wander too close to the places the killers were taken from, disappearing from the real world without a trace. So this is pretty much what happened to our friend Benedict Baker, who wandered too close to the Macmillan estate, which surprise surprise was the site of a mass murder. But you see, this is where it gets interesting, because Benedict Baker himself says that he began his journey of investigation into the town of Weeks in the summer of 1956 which is all well and good until you see that some of his later observations about the realm are dated in 1898, which is weird because he just traveled back in time. Now you could just dismiss this as the developers accidentally writing the wrong date, but I think not. Like three years, maybe, but a total of 58 years, I find it hard to believe that no developer noticed that whatsoever. 
And throughout his journal, we see repeated entries of this supposedly incorrect marking of the year. November 1896, December 1896, February 1897, and June 1897. So it's hard to believe the developers got all of that wrong. But you know what? I think this time travel is entirely logical. Here's why. The first piece of evidence is his journal itself. You see, all the other journals are dated like so. September 12th, September 21st, as in month day. But then we receive this pattern, question mark, question mark, question mark, September, question mark. Which is interesting in itself that he would know it is September. However, I'd be tempted to say he's guessing because he has no memory of how he got there. And since evil magic has no regard for time, who's to say he hasn't been put under a coma for a month? So if that's not it, what is it? Well this, the question marks. Notice, notice something? It's as if the developers were intentionally hinting that something really messed up happened with the time after the so-called awakening. For example, time travel. But I'll admit it's shaky. So on to the next piece. Benedict Baker was sent back in time to November 1896. But we have to ask the question, why is it specifically November 1896? Why isn't it November 1692? Or any date for that matter. Well, that's because in November 1896, the serial killer named the Trapper kills all his workers by detonating explosives. So before I do anything, I first want to prove that the Trapper could be alive in 1896. So, you see this picture of the Macmillan estate, straight from the wiki. There's barbed wire. And you know what the first patent was for barbed wire? 1867. So when the Macmillan estate was up and running, it was around 1816-7 or later. This means our date of November 1896 is still okay. In fact, all the equipment in Archie Macmillan's mine and the surrounding map looks like it could have existed in 1896, from electrical lights to the large crucible in the foundry. Their inventions are all dated to before November 1896. Dizzy Day Do, another theorist, excellent, also came up with a theory that the fictional Macmillan estate is set in the real life Mesabi range in Minnesota. So, number one, because it fits with the timeline, which is highly coincidental. Number two, there's a lot of iron ranges in the Mesabi range, with iron deposits first found in 1850 which goes along with the trapper's father being a mining magnate at the time. There's a few ghost towns around it, which is essentially what Weeks is. The town uh, Benedict Baker investigates so many years later. So what do both theories say? Well, Archie McMillan's was around running his mine around 1850 and later than 1867. So both of these work with the date of November 1896. So the trapper could have dr grown up to the man, the middle-aged man we see. Let's revisit that statement now. In November 1896, the serial killer named the trapper kills all his workers by detonating explosives. So we've sorted out that November 1896 is possible. Now killing all your workers by detonating explosives? That sounds like an action of great violence and malice, which awakens the entity. So the entity then memorializes crime. This crime. It preserves the time. So summary, Benedict Baker time travels from 1956 back to a very specific year. November 1896. Why November 1896? Well, because the trapper could have committed his heinous act and awakened the entity then. The world created by the entity is technically still stuck in 1896 when the entity replicated the events. So Benedict Baker has 
gone back in time to join it. So how come Benedict Baker makes notes in his journal in 1897, as if time is still running? You see, time becomes unfrozen when Benedict Baker joins the world. It becomes unfrozen when fresh victims come to play. Wait, but what about the other 364 victims lost in open missing person cases, which caused Benedict Baker to investigate in the first place? Shouldn't they have unfrozen the time instead? Well, first thing to realize is that Benedict Baker is the 365th victim, and there are 365 days in a year, which seems kind of suspicious. It's almost like a special milestone. So what I think is when they reach this milestone, time becomes unfrozen. Because let's face it, rituals like special numbers and dates. One more thing, why does this freezing of time only happen for the trapper and not the wraith and the hillbilly? So what you need to know first is that the wraith and the tr hillbilly cannot exist in 1896. Why? Well, the wraith, because in his backstory there are CCTV cameras, which were first put into place in 1942, so he's way too early. Same for the hillbilly, his signature weapon, chainsaw. Yeah, that was patented in 1923, so he's way too early as well. So why only the trapper? Well because the trapper is the one who awakened the entity first. He is the first killer, there were no killers before him. All the dates are centered around him because he is the special special in that he created the world, so the entity froze only the trapper's dates. This also corresponds with the beta, in which the trapper was the only character who was playable. And you know, the final kicker is this, the way the date is written. You see, Benedict Baker could never have known the date in the first place. He even says he has no memory of how he came here. Who's to say that the entity hasn't wiped, say, a month or two from his memory? Like even the diary for every entry after the awakening, as he calls it, never mentions a date because he is never sure. So how come in the game he suddenly knows that the date is November 1896? You see, Be but Benedict didn't write the day. Someone else with omnipotent knowledge did, like the entity. The entity wrote the date, teasing to the players that Benedict Baker had gone back in time to the time of the massacre. Phew! So that's proof that our old friend Benedict Baker did travel back in time. Oh gosh, that was like many, many hours of research and hard planning. But you know what? I enjoyed it. I loved diving into the lore, so it was a journey worth taking. Love to hear your thoughts on this lore, or if I'm just plain wrong because it felt as if I was just scrounging for ideas at times. But this is my best conclusion on what happened. Now, the footage behind this is from Hybrid Panda. If you don't know who he is, please subscribe to him. His links in the description down below. I've just recently got into his channel and the content is phenomenal. Phenomenal play, phenomenal commentary, just phenomenal. Links down in the description below. Have a nice day, hope you enjoyed. Anime Nyan, out.